Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. In the news, in the last few days, uh, has come word that Oscar De La Hoya, right, the head honcho at Golden Boy Promotions, has given his blueprint on how to beat Floyd Mayweather to Saul Alvarez. Right now, first, let me just say, that's how preposterous boxing is. People involved in the promotion of a fight have agendas, have preferences between the fighters, right? This would be, quite frankly, like the NFL announcing that it wants the Baltimore Ravens to beat the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl, right? Just absolutely ridiculous, but that's why we love boxing, because boxing is real. That's the first point. The second point, and I think it's really worth considering, is whether Oscar De La Hoya has any idea on how to beat Floyd Mayweather. I thought Floyd won that fight between the two of them. Teddy Atlas thought Floyd won that fight between the two of them. I know officially in the record books it's listed as Mayweather by split decision. I can tell you I happened to be in a Las Vegas casino the night of that fight, did not see it live, was watching updates from ESPN, from the sports book at the MGM Grand, and I can tell you on the updates, the guys watching the fight as it unfolded thought that Floyd Mayweather was winning the fight, right? When I saw the fight, after knowing the results, it looked to me like Floyd Mayweather was doing what he wanted to do. Now let me point out, the world was different then. The biggest draw in boxing was Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Floyd Mayweather was actually the opponent in the fight. The title at stake was Oscar De La Hoya's title. Going into the fight, there was a big question on whether Floyd was big enough to even be in the ring with Oscar De La Hoya. And of course, Floyd fed that concern because Mayweather is a guy who, quite frankly, is not going to gain weight to fight you at your weight. Floyd Mayweather came in at something like 150 or 151 pounds for that fight at 154. And let me just tell you what I saw. I saw Mayweather basically letting Oscar punch himself out. Mayweather's over at the side of the ropes and he's controlling the action, just like Ali did against George Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle. Just like today, Mayweather does against so many opponents, right? Look at the scorecards when he fought Ricky Hatton, right? Floyd Mayweather lets Hatton come to him. Mayweather likes being a matador, right? But even when they're over by the ropes, Mayweather's winning most of those rounds. Look at the scorecards in the Ricky Hatton fight, and that's pre-KO, and where does the KO take place? Over by the ropes, right? Ricky Hatton walks into a check left hook. Then, of course, gets knocked down a second time in the fight. But let me ask a third question, right? You know, even if Oscar De La Hoya believes that he knows how to beat Floyd Mayweather, Do you believe Mayweather would fight the same fight against Saul Alvarez? You know, Oscar De La Hoya is different than Saul Alvarez. Now, I know there's disagreement. I understand this disagreement is especially between people of different generations. I talk to young people. I understand that right now the view is the world's never been better. The talent's never been better. Right? With new technology and access to the internet and videotapes, um, that the newer models are better than the older models. I get it. But understand, to an older generation, I don't believe I've seen a fight 
where Saul Alvarez has moved as well as Oscar De La Hoya did the last few rounds of the fight against Felix Trinidad. Now understand, I know those rounds are controversial. There's no question that Oscar De La Hoya is ahead in that fight going into the last few rounds. De La Hoya thought he could just jog around the ring the last three rounds. He had such a big lead, he thought he obviously beat Felix Trinidad. Understand that fight was a battle of unbeatens. My point to you is simply this. As you look at Oscar De La Hoya today, just to understand he's retired today. There was a time when Oscar De La Hoya was an elite athlete with elite legs, right? Look at the movement those last few rounds against Felix Trinidad. History remembers it as Oscar running the last three rounds. My point to you is simply, as you look at those last three rounds, understand that Oscar could move. In my opinion, Oscar had an athleticism. That's all Alvarez does not have, right? You know, I think it's a little bit ridiculous for Oscar in interviews to be saying Saul Alvarez won't be flat-footed this fight and stuff like that. Understand, Oscar was never as tethered to the canvas as Saul Alvarez is right now, right? I think it's hard for a guy who was an elite fighter with a skill set who may have found it easy to move around the ring to fully understand that over 12 rounds against an elite fighter like Floyd Mayweather, a different fighter, Saul Alvarez, his protege, might not be as gifted below the waist, right? So first, let me say this. Oscar, more athletic, at least moved better than Saul Alvarez. <clears throat> Understand a big difference between the two two. Saul Alvarez is right-handed. Alvarez has a great straight right hand. It's great. It's Vladimir Klitschko-esque. In fact, that's the fighter I want you to think of when you think of Saul Alvarez. Great left hook, great straight right hand. But you need to realize that Oscar De La Hoya was a southpaw. He was an orthodox. He was a southpaw. He didn't have the straight right hand, right? Find me the De La Hoya fight where he closes the deal with a straight right hand. He didn't have that punch. Because he fought out of an orthodox stance, like Miguel Cotto, <clears throat> his dominant hand was the hand he's jabbing with. So what does that mean for a chess player like Floyd Mayweather? That could mean that Mayweather would let him throw his jab because Mayweather knew when Oscar De La Hoya comes forward behind a jab, his primary weapon is right in front of Mayweather. <clears throat> Mayweather wouldn't have to worry about Oscar De La Hoya's left hook. And understand, Oscar threw a left hook differently than Canelo throws a left hook. Canelo's left hook comes in high, right? Angles are everything in boxing, right? Canelo's left hook comes in high. Look at the Carlos Baldemir fight. Back in the day, we talked about how Oscar De La Hoya's left hook was really a 45. That's what they called it. It came in at, not at a 90 degree angle, not high. It came in at a 45 degree angle, right? So understand. <clears throat> De La Hoya, excuse me, Mayweather, who's a defensive genius, would fight a southpaw like Oscar De La Hoya differently than he would fight a right-handed fighter with a great long right hand like Saul Alvarez, right? It's conceivable that De La Hoya would let Oscar throw more jabs than he would let Saul Alvarez, right? Because with Oscar's jab, there's no one-two on it, right? Saul Alvarez hits you with a jab, there's a right hand that could be dropped behind it. When De La Hoya hit you with a jab, there was nothing that could be dropped behind it. He'd have to reach his hand back 
to throw a, a Sunday punch and hit you with the same left hand. Now there was a time where there was talk of Mayweather fighting De La Hoya in a rematch. <clears throat> and at that time, De La Hoya openly discussed with the press how he thought <clears throat> if he just doubled and tripled up on the jab more, that he could beat Floyd Mayweather. He thought it was going to be really easy for him because he had some success with the jab in his fight, right, against Mayweather. Well, my point to you is, given Oscar's skill set and the fact that he's left-hand dominant, he might believe that that would work for him. But that wouldn't work for Canelo. In other words, you know, fighters are unique. Oscar is a different fighter than Canelo. Oscar can impose a jab on you because he moves well enough. He, he, below the waist, he's faster than Canelo. So he can cut off the ring better than Saul Alvarez. Right? Saul Alvarez starts shooting a jab. The other guy could just walk away. Let's think about the Austin Trout fight. How many times in that fight is Austin Trout pinned on the ropes? You tell me. Wasn't the news in that fight the fact that when Austin Trout came forward, Canelo had, you know, good head movement and stuff like that. But Canelo himself isn't the kind of guy against a mobile opponent who can track that opponent down like Oscar De La Hoya. Also, as for Floyd, who's a premier chess player, Floyd might let one guy land the jab when Floyd knows that that nullifies the guy's left hook, the guy's money punch. But he might not let Canelo land that jab. Right? So, in my opinion, let's take with a grain of salt Oscar De La Hoya's alleged blueprint on how to beat Saul Alvarez, right? Clearly, whatever blueprint that Oscar De La Hoya thinks he had didn't work for Juan Manuel Marquez, who, in my opinion, skill-wise, is a better fighter than Saul Alvarez, right? You know, everyone can talk about blueprints. If they don't work, they don't work. Understand, Oscar De La Hoya's alleged blueprint against Floyd Mayweather has never worked because he lost their fight, right? Also understand, too, that De La Hoya is a better athlete than Saul Alvarez, right? I personally thought De La Hoya clearly beat Shane Mosley in the rematch. Understand how good De La Hoya was. Mosley has admitted now to having taken EPO before that rematch. Fernando Vargas was busted for performance enhancing drugs after he lost to Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Understand, guys were trying to chemically enhance themselves to beat Oscar De La Hoya. Understand when De La Hoya fought Bernard Hopkins, right? That De La Hoya gets stopped in that fight. But when De La Hoya fought Bernard Hopkins, you know, a good argument can be made that De La Hoya was fighting out of his weight class. Just like Mayweather was fighting out of his weight class when he fought De La Hoya many years ago. Right? So, to me, when I hear that a left-hand dominant fighter throwing a lot of jabs, who has superior foot speed, is giving tips to a right-hand dominant fighter who doesn't have the same foot speed, I have to laugh. Not believable to me. Understand, though, that there might be a method to the madness because at the end of the day, Oscar De La Hoya these days is a promoter. He's trying to get you excited about this fight. right? What better way to get you excited than to remind you that he lost by split decision to Floyd Mayweather and that he might have some insight that he's sharing on how to beat Mayweather. This might be part of an ad campaign. The one thing I do know, though, 
And I'm not expecting Saul Alvarez to have anything resembling Oscar De La Hoya's athleticism on the night of the fight, right? And without that athleticism, without that foot movement, I'm not sure if he can do what Oscar did and understand what Oscar did lost him the fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.